Yeah, a few people have been messaging me, you know, asking me to do a video about this little Charlie Parsons, you know, leaving boxing social. A few people have been asking me, you know, to react to it or review it and, you know, do a video about it. But it's like, who cares, man? Who cares? You know what I mean? It's not that interesting, man. You know, Umar, IFL Umar. Like, he recently fought Coogan off, didn't he? And he left IFL, you know what I mean? And there was, like, a bit of speculation, you know, in boxing. Like, oh, what's he going to do next? What's he going to do? Oh, Umar's left Coogan. Umar's left IFL. What's he going to do next? You know what I mean? And then he's, like, jumped on this channel, yeah, Fightwire TV, which is basically one of Fish Eyes' old YouTube channels, you know, Box Nation. It had, like, 59,000 subscribers. So Umar, he's just jumped on that channel, yeah. And he's doing interviews on there and I like checked out his interviews in it and it's just pretty much the same thing. You know that he was doing with IFL and that fucking Kogan. You know, it's just the same thing in it. So it wasn't like a, a big deal, you know what I mean? There was a lot of speculation and a bit of hype, you know, it was kind of trending on it. People tweeting, oh, what's Umar going to do next? And he's just doing the same as he was doing anyway. You know, it's not big news, is it? It's not interesting. It's not entertaining. He's just jumped on a channel, Fightwire TV. It's not really that good a channel. The interviews are pretty much the same, you know, as they were when he was with Coogan, you know, like sucking up to Fish Eyes and Tyson Fury and all that. So, you know, Fish Eyes, he's kind of rewarded him, you know, for sucking up to him over the years, you know, and asking him easy questions, you know, by making him head of his old channel. You know, to reward him for asking him nice, easy, soft questions, you know, over the years. So it's pretty much same old, same old, isn't it? So it's not a big deal, is it? You know what I mean? It's probably going to be the same with this little Parsons. He's probably going to join Eddie Earn's Matchroom channel, you know, on YouTube and just, you know, just keep that corny fucking banter going with Eddie Earn. You know what I mean? You know, those two, they try and act like, you know, like the in-betweeners, they try and get that like corny, cheesy banter going on, don't they? You know, where they're slagging each other off and they would call each other a prick, innit? Oh, you're such a prick. Oh, you're a prick. Yeah, you're a prick. Oh, you're such a prick. You know what I mean? They try and get that fucking corny in-betweeners banter going on, don't they? They try and do that and it's, that's just basically what it's going to be, innit? You know, and this little Parsons joins Eddie Earns Matchroom YouTube channel. You know, it's going to be the same old thing, you know, Parsons dissing Eddie Earns trainers. And Eddie Earns saying to Parsons, why are you wearing that hoodie? You know what I mean? That's a fake Stone Island hoodie. What are you doing? You prick. Oh, you're such a prick. Oh, you're a prick. You know, all that corny shit. So this little announcement from this little Charlie Parsons, you know, leaving boxing social, it's not big news, man. It's not interesting. It's again, it's like Umar, IFL Umar, you know him. You know, when he left Coogan, you know, if he would have like went to Hollywood, you know what I mean? And he was in some big Hollywood film, you know, uh, Oscar winning film or, you know, even if he like went into football, you know, cause he's like a football fan and he supports Chelsea. So if he became like a, like a pundit, you know, a match of the day or something like that. Or if he was on like EastEnders, you know, like Coogan was back in the day, you know, trying to be an actor and that. It didn't work, did it? It was too fake. Do you know what I mean? You could tell that he was acting Coogan. He was acting too dramatic, wasn't he? He was like overreacting, you know, with the facial expressions and that. You could just tell it was fake. You know, he, he's not a good actor, is he, Coogan? But... You know, if Umar went on to do something like that, it would be interesting, innit? But again, he just jumped on another boxing channel, yeah. And he's asking the same questions that he was asking anyway, you know, when he used to work with that Coogan. So it's not a big deal, man. It's like Rob Tebbett as well, you know him. He used to work for Boxing Social as well, didn't he? And he left and like, that was kind of trending, you know, Rob Tebbett leaving Boxing Social. You know, because boxing's kind of dead. You know, this little turkey guy, this little so-called excellent guy, he's kind of breathed a bit of life, you know, into boxing. You know, and it's kind of getting a bit more entertaining, isn't it, boxing? He's injected a bit of life, you know, into boxing. But, you know, back in the day, not even back in the day, like a few years ago, you know, like when Rob Tebbett left Boxing Social. You know, that was kind of trending, isn't it? Oh, Rob Tebbett's left Boxing Social. You know, and then what? What did he do? He joined a channel, yeah, called ID Boxing. 
which is now called Boxing News TV or something like that. And he just started doing like streams, you know, with that Barry Jones, you know, boring streams. Hardly anybody tuned in, you know what I mean? It's not really good, interesting content. So it's like, you know, people getting all fucking hyped up about Rob Tebbett leaving Boxing Social. You know, in hindsight, it's not a big deal, is it? It was nothing. You know what I mean? And he was doing some videos, you know, with that idiot, Castillo. You know, that stupid idiot who's like, yo, in it, in it, fam. Yo, in it. Yeah, big man ting, though, yeah? Big man ting, you know what I mean? He sounds fucking dumb. He sounds fucking stupid, don't he? You know what I mean? He tries to be all cool and gangster. He, he tries to act like some kind of Compton Crip, don't he? You know, with those glasses and the, you know, the hair gel, the jerry curl and all that. He tries to act like Easy e don't he? You know, trying to act like some kind of Compton Crip. Sound fucking stupid, man. You're not cool, man. You're not a Crip. You're not a gangster. You're not from Compton. So just stop talking like a fucking retard, man. You fucking idiot. It sounds stupid, don't it? And like, you know, Rob Tebber, he like, he enjoys working with him, don't he? He enjoys having a little black mate. You know what I mean? You can see Rob Tebber like smiling and really enjoying having a little black mate. And it's called virtue signaling. You know, some of these guys, like they love like a little black mate or they love like a little transformer mate or a little zesty mate and they walk around with their little zesty mate or their little black mate and they're like, yeah, look, 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 I've got a little black mate. I've got a little transformer mate. Yeah, I've got a little zesty mate. Look, look at my little zesty mate. I'm liberal. I'm, I'm open minded. I'm a good person. Look who I'm stood next to. I'm stood next to a little zesty fucker. Yeah, look at him. I'm a really good guy, aren't I? Yeah, look at me. Yeah, I'm really good, aren't I? I'm really liberal and open-minded and inclusive. Aren't I a good guy? You know, and that's what Rob Tebbett's like, isn't he? With that little fucking idiot. You know, like Castillo who can't speak properly. He just talks like a retard, isn't it, fam? Yeah, big man ting, though. Big man ting, isn't it? Yeah, he's such an idiot, man. He's such a fool, that guy. He's, he's corny, he's cringe. You know what I mean? You know, if Rob Tebbett wants a little black mate, just go and become mates with Johnny Nelson. Because at least Johnny Nelson can string together a sentence, you know what I mean? Unlike this fucking idiot here, this Castillo. This corny fucker. So yeah, this little Parsons leaving Boxing Social and people getting a bit excited by it, all hyped up and that, like, it's not a big deal, man. It's like Hoff helps, isn't it? You know, Michelle Hoff helps. You know, she like tried to like make a big announcement. You know, she was like writing tweets saying, yeah, I've got a big announcement. I'm going to make a really big announcement on June the 1st. Yeah, I've got a big announcement. When people was like dissing her on Twitter, she would reply saying, see, this is why I'm making this big announcement. Hashtag June the 1st. You know, we're really trying to hype up a big announcement. And then she eventually made the announcement, yeah. And it was just a dead announcement. She had two little things that she wanted to announce. One of them was OnlyFans, yeah. She was joining OnlyFans, but she's not a fucking attractive woman anymore. She's in her 40s. She's hit the wall, yeah. She's not nice. She's not in her prime. She's 40. She's hit the wall. So you know her going on OnlyFans, it didn't work, you know what I mean? And she didn't get the subscriptions that she thought she would get. Not as many people subscribed as she had hoped. You know, because she's hit the wall and she's not even that nice anyway. And like a few simps, they did subscribe to her OnlyFans, but then they unsubscribed and they sent me photos, you know, telling me why they unsubscribed. And it's because she wasn't even really showing anything. She was just like sending them like bikini photos which they can see anyway, you know, on the internet, on Google Images. So they like unsubscribed in it and they just said it was a load of shit. It was a scam. So Hall Phelps, you know, a little OnlyFans announcement, it was dead. And her other announcement was that she was joining some American Cornhole League. And that Cornhole League, yeah, it's just basically people chucking little bean bags, you know, into holes. So that was another one of her big announcements. You know, people chucking little bean bags, you know, into holes. That was her announcement. If any of you like, ever watched a, a full episode of that American Cornhole League, you know, we haven't, have we? 
we're not interested are we we don't know what time it's on what day it's on what channel it's on we're, we've got no interest at all in watching Michelle Hall Phelps on the American Cornhole League but that was another one of her so-called big announcements wasn't it that she kept hyping up on Twitter yeah yeah I've got a big announcement hashtag June the 1st and it was dead wasn't it and she like sold her channel yeah behind the gloves for a few little poxy quid because she could see the numbers you know starting to decline one because she was only really getting people watching her channel because she's a woman in it and she's got a pussy so it's like a novelty in it any woman who kind of gets involved in boxing it's a bit of sexual novelty in it so people used to watch her interviews even though she's not that nice we used to watch her interviews you know for sexual reasons not because she's a good interviewer she's not we just watched her for sexual reasons but as she hit the wall and she started to get older her numbers started to decline you know what I mean? And there's a lot more YouTube boxing channels out there now. You know what I mean? Eddie Earn set up his channel. And he's like the main person, isn't he? You know, the main interviewee. You know that these YouTube boxing channels try and interview Eddie Earn. So when he set up his own channel, these YouTube boxing channels, they were affected. Because he can just put out his own content. You know what I mean? And like I say, there's all these channels now in boxing. They're all pretty much asking the same questions, interviewing the same people, Gareth A. Davis. They're not really that diverse and original. Yeah? Like, look at Seconds Out, for example. What are they known for? Like, what content are they known for other than Deontay Wilder saying to this day? They're not known for anything else. That's the only thing Seconds Out are known for, that little Deontay Wilder moment. They're not known for anything else, their content. So they're not really a good channel, are they? Fucking Radio Raheem, he's done nothing. He's created no great content at all, other than that little viral Deontay Wilder moment. That's it. He's done nothing. These channels might have 800,000 subscribers, 700,000 subscribers, 600,000 subscribers, but they're not getting 600,000 views, are they, per video? So a lot of the time they've, they've either bought subscribers, yeah, or people subscribed to IFL back in the day. You know, and IFL was like the only channel, or there was a few others, seconds out. They subscribed early, but as time's gone on, there's been more and more channels coming along, and people couldn't be bothered to unsubscribe, or they lost their password, so they can't get into their account, or they've died, or something like that. So a lot of these channels that have got a lot of subscribers, they're not really... Good channels, man. Like I say, seconds out. What, what are they known for other than Deontay Wilder saying to this day? What's IFL? Like, what are they now? Like, they're, they're nothing. Got all these idiots running around like headless chickens. They ain't got any kind of personality. Got nothing about them. No character. Yeah? There's all these other channels. So it's getting too saturated, isn't it? At least with this Boxing King Media guy, he's trying to go down a different path. He's trying to go down the the travel vlog path, you know what I mean? He's trying to get like an idiot abroad type thing going on in it, you know, with me and him, and it's, it's somewhat different. I don't really, I don't really like them in it. I don't really promote them. I'm not really uh, proud of them. I just do them in it. I want the money. But a lot of these channels, they, they ain't got any range, man. They just do the same interviews, ask the same questions as each other. You know, it's just dead content in it. And it's like a conveyor belt. He'll leave this channel and then he'll join that channel and he'll leave that channel and join that channel and she'll leave that channel and join that channel. So with Hall Phelps, she sold her channel for peanuts. Then her OnlyFans started to dry up. No one watches the American Cornhole League. So now she's trying to like creep back into the YouTube boxing scene. You know, by trying to jump on Boxing Social's channel. You know, I've heard dead interviews. It's just fucking dead, man. It's dead. So, yeah, this little Parsons guy leaving Boxing Social, it's not really a big deal, is it? Well, it depends. It depends what he does, you know what I mean? You know, if he manages to sort of, like, become Ed Sheeran's videographer, you know, and he's following him around, you know, recording him and interviewing him, and, you know, he's get, managing to get into those kind of circles... You know, with Ed Sheeran and his little mates, his little celebrity mates. You know, if Parsons manages to get in that little circle there and he starts mingling with those kind of guys and he starts getting a load of posse, 
you know, on the back of hanging around with that Ed Sheeran, then that's a good step up in it from that dead boxing channel, boxing social. So, you know, if he manages to do that, then yeah, that's good in it. That's a good step up. But if he just goes onto another channel, another YouTube boxing channel, you know, it's not really that interesting, is it? So we'll just see what happens in it. He said he's got an announcement coming soon and that's what Hall Phelps said, didn't she? And that was a dead announcement. But this little Parsons announcement might be a bit better, you know, a bit more interesting. So we'll see how it goes, innit? Yeah? Thanks for that.